Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Above the Curve brought to you at the Los Angeles Invitational. I'm here with Jerry Thompson and Brad Nelson, and we're just going to break down the legacy metagame. Uh, so, started off, we had Baltimore just recently, uh, and their Bug Delver was a very big deck, uh, even supplanting Rug Delver as far as success rate goes. So, uh, is it better? It probably is better. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Rug Delver player, and I, I, I love the archetype. I just love the high disruption that it has. Uh, against everything in the format. And the only way it really loses is if it can't keep up the tempo and if the player gets ahead of you. So I love just always having this like structured strategy in such a wide open format, especially for me sure, since sure. I haven't played a lot. But right when I saw Death Rite, I thought that card was going to be very good. Him to Turok, Thoughtseize, these cards are powerful. And Abrupt Decay is very good against Miracle. So Rug had this tough time against the Miracle matchup. And it was you know just treading water, not really finding its home. So yeah, it's going to shift. It's going to go to Bug. And we're going to have better uh, removal spells, a more powerful strategy. And Delver's still the card that does the most damage. So getting rid of Nimble Mongoose kind of sucks, but uh, the upgrade for Deathrite Shaman, just having the ability to ramp you into things, yeah, yeah. as well as play around opponents' dazes and such like that. I, I really like the strategy. Yeah, Deathrite Shaman seemed very impressive from what I saw at the tournament. Uh, speaking of Miracles, Jerry, Miracles has been a top performing deck. I know you're familiar with it. Uh, recently, we had Bug Control also coming out in that role with more Deathrite Shaman. So, uh, yeah, what's the control strategy? Uh, in the I, I I definitely agree that Abrupt Decay solves a lot of problems, and it kind of like Miracles almost had a stranglehold on the format, which is kind of weird for like a control deck, like a pure control deck to have, yeah. especially as of late. But it always seemed like there were always multiple copies of the Miracle deck in top eight, and it was very difficult for decks like Rog and Maverick to beat it. And now with Abrupt Decay, I think the shift from Rug Delver to Bug Delver and like Bug Control decks popping up, like Abrupt Decay is doing a ton of work, both able to answer like problematic permanence, stuff like Bitter Blossom or Jit, like all these <laughs> random cards that people would have, but plus being able to handle counterbalance. But I think like the Miracle deck is still good. And I don't know, like maybe you kind of like, uh, shift away from counterbalance a little bit, not become as reliant on it, and and try and just like play more Jaces or more hard counter spells, stuff like that, so that the abrupt decays actually aren't that good against you. Uh, maybe that's like one way you could take it. But I, I think the deck is still going to show up. People still are familiar with it, and they might not be too comfortable like switching kind of at the last minute. So I think it's still going to be popular, but I don't think it's going to do as well as it's been doing. Sure, sure. Uh, Baltimore also showcased Stoneblade in the hands of. <laughs> the unbeaten Shaheen Sarani over the course of the tournament. So uh, what do you think of Stoneblade's home in the format right now? Oh, man. So I played Stoneblade at one tournament, so I consider myself an expert with the deck. <laughs> That's very yeah, fair. Yeah. You did commentary on a lot of Stoneblade matches. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, so, yeah, I did a lot of commentary with uh, Legacy, and I played Stoneblade once. And the one thing I found is, like, I was like, this deck has so many powerful cards. It's got Stoneforge Mystic, Batter Skull, Jace, Force, Brainstorm. Swords to Plowshare, like all the most powerful cards. And I was like, man, I just want to play this deck because it has everything I want to play with. And then I realized once I started getting into it and playing these matches that the games that you're winning would be the games that other decks would have just won. So you get into this position where you're you're ahead, you've got your, you you know, accomplished your goal, you have your batter skull in play, you might have a Jace, you have a counter spell or a brainstorm and a removal spell. And slowly your opponent just gets you because you're dealing four to them a turn where every other deck is just 15 or dead, or Delver counter counter burn spell, something like that. Like the, the power level of the deck isn't really there because you're just relying on this one artifact that gets you there. Sometimes when dealing click shore, sometimes a Jace will just get you out, out of a bad situation, just drop, yeah. like drown your opponent in Carnivore. But for the most part, I hate that the deck will be winning on turn six, but will not win until turn 12. Yeah. It's definitely a very grindy deck designed yeah. to let players just make a ton of decisions, really. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get fancy, I guess that's your bag. <laughs> speaking, I mean, it's not even fancy. <laughs> speaking of fancy, uh, Legacy home to a lot of combo decks, a lot of combo decks. There are all kinds of different ones, but we haven't really been seeing much success from the combo decks lately in the format. Yeah, I think a lot of that's due to the high prevalence of the Delver decks and especially the Blue-White Miracle decks. Like, before you would see Delver have like, you know, 15 to 20 percent of the metagame. Yep. But then people started playing Miracles too, so now the metagame is actually like 30 to 35 percent of blue decks that these combo decks have a real tough time dealing with. And especially once people adapted to show and tell, you see the, the Miracle decks having like Venser in the sideboard to just like bounce the omniscience when it comes out, or even Goblin sideboarding Angel of Despair <laughs> against show and tell. Like, <laughs> at, at that point, you know that like show and tell's time is probably about done, you know? So, uh, that deck has basically fallen off, and since that became very popular, there hasn't been like a de facto best combo deck. 
So I think people right now are just like, oh, I don't know what to play. Like, is it Dredge? Like, do I do that? And when everyone's main decking like Deathrite Shamans, is that a good idea? Like, probably not. I don't know. But like, Mavericks died out, combos died out, Show and Tell specifically is just like gone. So it seems like the format is actually getting to a point where instead of having like 15 viable decks, like maybe there's like only seven or something. So I, I think that's kind of cool. That's fresh for Legacy. Uh, speaking of, you know, with the sudden kind of downplay of combo, you would think Maverick might be becoming a better deck, but that's not what we're seeing at all. Yeah, what Mir do you Miracles that to? is still really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like a very tough matchup for the green white creature deck. Yeah. And Deathrite Shaman is no slouch either. True. Uh, so, one other deck, the, the yeah. Tribal Linears. There have obviously been a few <laughs> in uh, over the course of Legacy's history, but Goblins, one of the bigger ones. Yeah, I definitely think that Goblins is probably going to end up um, having a resurgence in power level only because Maverick is a creature based deck, just same as Goblins, but there's no real card advantage. Maverick just has true. its spells and they die and you get Terminus, and then you don't really have anything to follow it up with. But Goblins has all the ringleaders, all the matrons, enough ways to put a ton of pressure on not only their lands but their life total and be able to drown them out so their Terminus isn't that high impact because you also can give all your guys haste. You can also deal a ton of damage and you're pretty resilient to that. But now where Goblins is good against like Wrath effects, it's very bad against combo. Yeah. And so if combo is going away and these, these uh, Delver decks are starting to go away from Lightning Bolt and go more towards Abrupt Decay as their removal spell of choice, I think Goblins might just be a very good choice this weekend. Uh, anyone playing it, if Cedric Phillips is in the room, he's probably <laughs> just a lock for Hato. Uh, but I think Goblins is going to be an out, like a big part of this metagame and uh, moving forward, it's going to have to move back to a combo format before it, uh, it goes anywhere. Yeah, well, we'll see if it can, especially with Gatecrash on the horizon. Uh, that's all for this edition of Above the Curve on Legacy at the Invitational. We'll see how everything shakes out when the tournament's over.